So good afternoon. <laughs> uh, I'm Eric Isaacs, director of the laboratory, and it's really an honor to welcome everybody here today. Um, I'd like to give a special thanks to our senator, Senator Dick Durbin, for being with us here today. Um, the senator is a great uh, advocate for Argonne and for science and has long been so. And in fact, just this past Thursday, we visited the senator along with President Zimmer and our Board of Governors, where he reiterate his, his strong commitment to the kind of work we do here at Argonne, as well as our sister lab, Fermilab. I do want to mention before I say a few words that it's very noisy in the room. Uh, I'm sure the senator can speak above the noise. The, but most of the noise you're hearing is not from the computer behind me. The computer behind me is actually water-cooled and very quiet. It's actually the, all those old computers sitting over on the other side of the room that are generating all that fan noise. So this is the future. Um, I also want to give a special welcome to the Department of Energy, um, and in particular, my colleague, Joanna Livengood, who's here, site office manager. Um, uh, Mira really is an extraordinary uh, addition to the suite of user facilities that the DOE uh, makes available uh, and is sponsored by the Department of Energy's Office of Science and provides researchers with tools that are just beyond anything you can get almost anywhere else in the world. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, David Turek, who is the VP for Exascale Systems at IBM. This computer behind me here is a, is the Mira, a Mira computer, is a Blue Gene Q computer, uh, and it's the latest machine that we have installed here at the laboratory, pushes up to about 10 petaflops. I want to welcome uh, Don Levy, who's here representing the University of Chicago. He's the VP for Research and National Laboratories. And as many of you know, the university has been managing the laboratory for DOE since 1946. Uh, also delighted to have our community uh, leaders roundtable here, who are members of the local community, who are here very often quarterly, but also delighted to have them here and joining us in this, in this ribbon cutting. Um, this is really a, a great day for Argonne, for the state of Illinois, and also for the nation. We're here to dedicate formally this computer called Mira. Uh, it is ranked fifth fastest in the world, uh, and it's capable of, of what's, what I've already mentioned, 10 petaflops, which is 10 quadrillion operations per second. Uh, with this computer, it's great that it's fast, but what it also does is solve really important, really important problems. It's really becoming a vital tool of researchers in science and engineering today and going forward. It's really transforming the way we think about how we do science today. And this machine in particular, in particular will accelerate breakthroughs in a whole range of scientific and engineering uh, disciplines, uh, including things like making jet engines much more energy efficient uh, by developing power grids, that uh, expand our use of renewable energy by uh, extending the range uh, and power of electric vehicles and also even helping design and manage uh, sustainable cities of the future. So this machine is an incredibly powerful tool uh, and will help U.S. researchers not only do these great things but at the same time maintain a competitive edge in the development of, of products and services. And it's these kinds of tools that will be used not just by places like Argonne, but by academia, by industry, as well as our sister national laboratories. So um, I'd like you to all join me in welcoming uh, Rick Stevens, who's the Associate Lab Director here at Argonne for Computing, Environmental, and Life Sciences. Uh, Rick has really shown leadership nationally and worldwide in driving to this sort of machine, not just today at 10 petaflops, but thinking to the future to exaflops and beyond. So Rick, can you please come up? Thanks, Eric. Uh, it's fun to talk in here with a, usually I give tours in here with no amplification, so this is a lot, lot better. I'd like to add my thanks uh, also to Senator Durbin for uh, coming today and uh, our many honored guests. Um, one of the reasons we're here today is because of all the hard work of the uh, Argonne Leadership Computing Facility. I want to thank the staff for uh, making this machine work and standing it up and, uh, and tolerating this many people in the, in the room. I also want to uh, thank Frank Inez, who's here as our federal product manager. Um, this is a very important day. Uh, the, first con the first idea for this machine um, uh, took place over five years ago uh, in a joint R&D project between IBM, uh, Lawrence Livermore National Lab, and Argonne. And we worked for many years together uh, to design a machine that's really optimized for science. And, and that's what we, we have behind me. This is a, an amazing machine. It's uh, almost uh, 800,000 processors, uh, almost a petabyte of main memory. And uh, as Eric said, it's a 10 petaflop computer. Of course, if uh, uh, it just recently 
became fifth in the world. It came out uh, a little bit ahead of that uh, due to a Chinese machine that's now about uh, three times, three and a half times faster. Um, but to put this in perspective, Mira was 20 times faster than the previous generation machine that we have here at Argonne that's across the laboratory in another building. Um, so in five years, we've deployed something that's 20 times faster. If we could do that again, uh, and one more time again, we would get to an exascale uh, by about 2023 20, or something. Uh, but to do that, we will need a lot of support and a lot of R&D to do that. But today, our focus really isn't the machine. It's what we can do with this kind of hardware. Uh, this machine uh, is being used to do, of course, modeling and simulation and large-scale data analysis. Uh, some of the kinds of problems we're uh, working on, for example, is uh, a partnership with Caterpillar. And we have Kevin Hostetter here from Caterpillar. Um, we're using Mira to design uh, new, more efficient, uh, more engineered uh, combustion systems with Caterpillar. Um, we're also using it, uh, surprisingly, to design better concrete. We have a project with the National Institute for Standards and Technology. Of course, concrete's used all over the world. It takes a, to produce a ton of concrete produces a ton of CO2. And, uh, Reducing the carbon footprint of concrete would be a, a good thing, as well as improving its ability to be recycled and so forth. So that's a project we're doing. We're also working uh, here to focus on uh, the grid, optimizing electric power grid in Illinois. Um, we're working uh, out how we would add wind power uh, to the Illinois grid without destabilizing it and making it uh, more efficient. Uh, Argonne does a lot of work in energy storage. One of the projects that has a large allocation on this machine is a project to explore materials for lithium air batteries that could dramatically uh, improve the range of electric vehicles. We're also using it to design uh, or understand new drugs and design uh, inhibitors for certain proteins. So, um, but even as we're working on things, uh, on this current machine, we're spending time thinking about the future. I mentioned this exascale goal, this idea of deploying a machine that's about 100 uh, to 1,000 times faster than the current machine. Uh, and the partnerships that we have, both on using the machine and on developing uh, this hardware in the future. Uh, and that's really uh, where we're focusing our energy now. Of course, supplying uh, good support for the users that are using this machine, but looking forward. So this is a great day. I thank all of you uh, for coming. And uh, I guess I took it back to uh, Dave Turek. I'm very pleased to be here on behalf of IBM to witness this important dedication. And I want to um, spread my thanks around to uh, all the people who have been involved in helping make this possible, my colleagues at IBM, but my colleagues at DOE especially, and Argonne in particular. My personal relationship with Argonne goes back 23 years. Uh, we've gone through many generations of computing, and every step of the way we've advanced the state of the art in terms of high performance computing available and accessible to American industry. It's been a partnership that's really driven American competitiveness more than anything. And it's competitiveness not only in industries and companies like Caterpillar, but even in the IT industry itself, it's made, it's made US computer companies more competitive on a worldwide basis. And this is progressively more important as we get to an era in our lifetimes where competition takes place across national boundaries, where nation states are involved in making investments and driving the competitive factors that affect our lives on a daily basis. I want to thank Senator Durbin for his support for what Argonne has been able to do here, and also quite specifically for the support of the uh, exascale legislation to try to reach the ambition that Rick's alluded to. This is a journey that will take some time. It will be difficult, and we love difficult problems. There's nothing better, as you all know, than to have somebody walk into your office and say, here's a problem that can't be solved. Americans know how to deal with that. IBM knows how to deal with that. People at Argonne National Lab know how to deal with that. Those are the challenges we want to be faced with. We can overcome those odds and we can achieve great things together. So again, my thanks to Eric, to Rick, to Senator Durbin for inviting uh, me to be here on behalf of IBM. We expect our partnership to continue 
uh, fruitfully over the next five to 10 to 15 years for as long as I'm around and to make sure that we achieve all the kinds of goals that we all have an ambition to achieve. This is a great day, not only for Argonne National Lab, it's a great day for the Department of Energy. It's a great day for the U.S. economy. What comes out of this will have a material impact on U.S. competitiveness. Thank you. So thank you, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Rick. It now gives me great pleasure. Please join me in welcoming Senator Durbin. Thank you very much. Um, to Eric and Stephen and David, thank you for inviting me here today. I was just sitting there thinking, 10 quadrillion calculations per second. This computer has to think faster than a politician trying to duck a tough question. Uh, and obviously it's up to the challenge, and I'm glad to be here today. My staff did a good job writing a speech, telling about all the practical applications of this computer, but you already know that, and that's why you're here. It's important, though, that those who aren't here hear this explanation. I live in a political world in Washington where decisions are being made every day about the cost of different projects and whether those costs can be afforded. Sequestration, ring a bell. That decision suggested that we would just cut across the board and no one would notice. Well, I noticed, I bet you did too. Because when you start cutting back on research grants, even by a percentage, even for six or seven months, you've missed an opportunity. And you may have created an environment where many people with your skills say, what's the point? I'm gonna give my life to this so some politician in Washington can decide next year that they aren't gonna fund my project? I've got another idea. There's something else that might be more valuable. That's what troubles me. I live in a world where people know the cost of everything but the value of nothing. And if we don't start thinking in terms of value, in terms of human knowledge, our competitive edge, our standing in the world, we're gonna fall behind. That's the reality of what we're facing today. Make no mistake, the report on the Chinese is just the beginning. There are other countries too. They're dreaming of getting ahead of the United States when it comes to this basic research. Will we let them? We will if we continue to believe that investment in domestic discretionary spending for research is expendable. The National Science Foundation took a hit from sequestration. The National Institute of Health lost $1.8 billion out of a $32 billion budget. Only $1.8 billion. But what did we lose with that $1.8 billion? What did we fail to learn with that $1.8 billion? I see it much differently. I believe that if we are going to be a thriving economy, a prosperous nation, and a leader in the world, we have to invest in research and we have to invest in people. This last week, we had a pretty important debate in the United States Senate. We decided to do something about our broken immigration system. There are a lot of parts to it. 11 million undocumented people in our country. It's something that we have to reconcile, resolve, and I think we did on a fair basis. But another part of that bill also took a look to the future when it came to the minds that we need in our future. It was about 10 years ago that I addressed the commencement of the Illinois Institute of Technology. It was at the Chicago Theater on State Street downtown. I thought it was pretty interesting when they tried, with some limited success, to read the names of all of those receiving masters and PhDs. There were a lot of tough names to pronounce for an American. Many of them were Indian and Asian, receiving not just one master's degree, but multiple degrees and PhDs. We literally handed them their diplomas and then pointed to the Kennedy Expressway and the road out to O'Hare, giving them an indication that now having acquired one of the best educations in the world, they were welcome to leave. The immigration bill we passed last week changes that. We now tell them they're welcome to stay. If they can find a job, we will offer them a green card to become citizens of the United States, to add to our brain pool in this country so that we can have the people on board to keep this economy moving forward, so that the concept of an exascale computer 
will be a concept we can execute with homegrown talent as well as trained talent right here in America. That's the story not only of Argon, I think it's the story of science in the 21st century. Standing still, deciding to wait six months, a year or beyond, is an invitation for failure. I asked uh, basically what Mira meant, and I was told it was a derivative from a Latin word, took that too many years ago, uh, that relates to miraculous, a miracle. Well, this is miraculous, but it's only today's miracle. We need tomorrow's miracle. The investments we're making in ex exascale research really look beyond in terms of the next five or 10 years. Now, I'll close by saying politicians aren't very good at this generally. We're lucky to have people like Bill Foster, uh, who's in our delegation, who kind of understands science in ways none of us do and explains to us the value of many of these things. Remember the superconducting super collider? the national competition that Illinois lost? Remember when it went to Texas and they dug the big hole and had to fill it back in? Politicians lost the will to complete the project. So we need to translate this computer into real life value and we need to incentivize those in public life who are willing to invest in the research, the education, and the immigration that will make the 21st century an American century as well. Thank you.